Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Desires and welcome to your detailed forecast update for Monday the 25th of November 2024. We've got a lot to get through today including a five day bout of severe thunderstorms expected across parts of WA and the Northern Territory, heavy rainfall expected across parts of central Queensland and into central New South Wales as well and in fact a lot of rainfall is now on the cards of parts of northeastern New South Wales. I'll give a tropical weather forecast as well and we've got increasing chance for a tropical cyclone off Western Australia so all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel please consider subscribing the support lately has been much appreciated but let's get stuck straight into things over in central Queensland and central New South Wales. We've got a lot to get through in this part of the video as well so make sure you are paying close attention especially if rainfall does interest you. So just going to skip through the next few days a couple of showers and storms expected here and there this afternoon into the western half of Queensland also the western half of New South Wales. Uh, not likely to be severe but we could still be seeing a couple of severe cells here and there with the odd chance of some heavy rainfall and damaging winds but they're going to be so isolated they're most likely not a concern for many communities. Tomorrow afternoon we'll see an outbreak of severe thunderstorms across parts of South Australia, especially along the Air Peninsula and up towards Roxby Downs. Again, kind of out of our scope of focus at this time. We'll jump back to those later on in the forecast update. A few thunderstorms as well across the central parts of New South Wales tomorrow afternoon and then around tomorrow evening and into early Wednesday morning, which will turn to rain at times, especially across more central parts of the state around the Coba and Berowina sort of area. You can see a line of rainfall uh, or a line of showers tending to rainfall at times between Cobar and Griffith extending down to about Albury, powered by a low pressure system that's expected to wrap itself up in the Great Australian Bight before heading across towards Bass Strait and Tasmania. Now this low pressure system here, it's a complex low pressure system, it's going to be dragging in a lot of moisture from a monsoonal burst, which we'll talk about later on in the video across the Northern Territory and parts of Western Queensland, but that is going to create this uh, kind of uh, beautiful environment if you like for showers and thunderstorms especially those showers which will turn to rainfall at times from Wednesday onwards. You can see they do ease off Wednesday afternoon. It's most likely just going to be a bit of a drizzly, miserable day across interior parts of New South Wales, cool with a chance of showers here and there, turning to rainfall at times before Thursday. The rainfall really does pipe up, and you can see widespread showers and thunderstorms expected pretty much everywhere into the northeast of the state, uh, especially around the Tamworth, Moree, Dubbo uh, area, especially just in this sort of pocket here, and then extending out towards Burke and Wanaring as well. Some uh, showers and thunderstorms expected here and there. Again, we're talking about the chance of showers and thunderstorms here for those rainfall hopefuls, uh, the showers and thunderstorms, that means that the rainfall is pretty unpredictable, all things considered for both Wednesday and Thursday. It's a very hard sell, sell this forecast. Thankfully though, things do become a little bit more predictable on Friday when we're going to have just a big kind of pool of showers tending to rain at times across interior parts of central New South Wales, especially along the New South Wales Queensland border around sort of Lightning Ridge we'll get in Fallon and St George. Just in this general area here that I'm circling right now, they do desperately need some rainfall out here as well. The rainfall hasn't really piped up around the light Ridge area and even for Burke either the rainfall hasn't piped up yet so this rainfall is much needed and it is great to see on the forecast. Further towards the west of that on Thursday, uh, no Friday afternoon rather, you can see there is going to be a line of thunderstorms here, potentially severe ones as well powered by this trough that's extending deep into uh, interior parts of New South Wales. It's a pretty weird forecast all things considered and in fact quite a weird weather pattern. It's kind of that monsoon trough that's expected to burst across parts of the Northern Territory extending deep south into Queensland and then a surface trough kind of tickling out of it uh, getting into New South Wales uh, with the rainfall uh, piping up off the end of that and you can see throughout Friday there is a lot of kind of moderate rainfall expected across interior parts of New South Wales well light to moderate rainfall there will be some decent falls here and there we're talking up towards 50 or 60 millimeters or so between Thursday and Friday and then potentially even more on Saturday I mean you can see quite a band of uh, showers uh, in fact heavy rainfall at times could be seen across interior parts of New South Wales especially once it gets itself jammed up between the Blue Mountains we'll be seeing some very heavy falls at times which could amount towards uh, 80 to 120 millimetres across a six hour period. You can see communities such as Moree and Tamworth getting some good rainfall as well and even some uh, moderate rainfall extending in towards Sydney and the Newcastle area powered by another low pressure system that's going to drag this weather offshore. In fact the tail end of this low pressure system here dragging this system pretty much completely out of New South Wales by Saturday night into early Sunday morning and the showers clearing out by, Saturday, uh, by Sunday afternoon. We'll just touch on the New South Wales Queensland stuff in just a few moments. In terms of giving a proper uh, forecast for pretty much everywhere across New South Wales for this. It'd be pretty much impossible at this time just considering the complex nature of this weather system. But I'm going to do my best here and uh, kind of break down the rainfall forecast here. So over a four day period, keep in mind the majority of the rainfall coming through Friday and Saturday, especially throughout Saturday, that's when the heaviest falls are going to be uh, sort of around the uh, more foothills and the mountainous areas into the northeast of the state and then into the east and central parts of the state as well around Orange. That's where the heaviest falls are going to be rather. Uh, you can see uh, Burke expecting up towards 50 
50mm or so, I think a good number for Burke, especially between Thursday, Friday, and into Saturday morning, would be somewhere between 20 and 50 millimeters of rainfall. I think 50 is probably calling it a little bit bullish at this time, depending on how the thunderstorms behave there. Lightning Ridge will get around 50 millimeters. Uh, Moree as well, around 50 millimeters, probably a little bit more actually for Moree. Uh, Narabri as well could see up towards 50 or 60 millimeters. Tamworth likely up towards 80 millimeters of rainfall. Dubbo as well could get up towards 80 millimeters of rainfall, depending on how thunderstorms behave there. Parks, Orange, Maji, Bathurst, Lithgow, the community is more nestled into the foothills towards the mountainous areas into the eastern half of where this rainfall is expected to fall. Uh, they're expecting the heaviest falls and they could see up towards 100 millimetres, especially between Friday and Saturday and into early Sunday morning, with the heaviest falls being around Saturday afternoon. Further south out towards uh, Wyalong, Young, Wagga Wagga, the rainfall will be between about 20 and 40 millimetres. Could be a little bit heavier than that. Canberra expecting about 30 or 40 millimetres as well. We could see some much heavier falls around the uh, more mountainous areas down towards Threadbow or Kumo or Cabramara. We could be seeing falls towards 80 or 90 millimetres down there that haven't been picked up by the forecast models, but they do typically receive some heavy falls there. And into uh, Victoria as well, especially into the Gibson region, rainfall shouldn't be too much between 10 and 30 millimetres. Certainly nothing to be concerned about in terms of flooding. Sydney, the rainfall should be on Saturday between 20 and 50 millimetres. Could get some good falls there, even in towards Sunday morning as well. To the 9am on Sunday, I'd not be surprised if areas along this sort of coast here, extending between Wollongong uh, up to about Taree, uh, including Newcastle and Foster, we could be seeing falls up towards 100 millimetres to the 9am on Sunday. I would not be surprised with that at all. And then into the much more further northeastern parts of New South Wales and into the southeastern corner of Queensland, you can see the rainfall there not looking too flash. I'll touch on the thunderstorm risk in just a few moments, but just before we get to that, I would like to talk about the chance of flooding, especially into interior parts of New South Wales around Wanaring and Burke, and even further inland out towards White Cliffs, Will County and Broken Hill. Even though those communities don't actually have any rainfall on the forecast over the next, well, let alone four days, but actually over the next 10 days, you can see rainfall accumulations there are pretty much nil for the majority of those locations. Considering that there is rivers at moderate flooding alert and getting close towards major flooding alert into the south central parts of Queensland in this sort of area here, the chance of flooding is going to be exacerbated for those areas. Regardless of if they get 5 millimetres or 50 millimetres, it's just going to top up those rivers even further and get them up towards that moderate or major flooding alert. And you can see here on the soil moisture map that these communities, even though they are currently bone dry or sitting at bone dry, because there's been so much rainfall in this area around Roma and Chinchilla over the last couple of weeks, the rivers are flowing and they are flowing quite hard indeed. And you can see soil moisture values by the end of, or the start of next week and the end of next weekend, looking very high across much of northeastern New South Wales. And that is just going to cause more trouble for rainfall on Saturday and Sunday. It's just all going to become runoff and flow into those rivers. That has been a long-winded forecast for New South Wales. There's been a lot of detail today to kind of crank out in this forecast as well. If I have left anything unanswered as well, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Unfortunately, I just can't squeeze out the detail that I would like to on this weather event because it is multi-day and happening across a very wide swathe of New South Wales, but I'll be giving day-by-day -day breakdowns as this weather event does unfold as well. Not as great as a full in-depth forecast, which will take me probably an hour to get through, uh, but I will still be giving the day-by-day -day breakdowns on this weather event. So if you're interested in that, then please consider subscribing. Now, as promised, I would just like to touch on the chance of potentially severe thunderstorms piping up from Thursday across the southeast of Queensland. Now, we haven't had anything in the way of thunderstorm activity for the last couple of days there. So a couple of people definitely hanging out for the chance of a few thunderstorms. You can see Thursday, the chance of showers and also in towards Friday as well, the chance of showers here and there, but there shouldn't be anything crazy. Saturday morning as well, the showers could be a little bit heavier at times, especially along the Gold Coast. I kind of have this uh, hunch that there might be a little bit of rainfall down there into the southeast of Queensland on the Gold Coast, kind of uh, Saturday morning into early afternoon. I reckon there could be some decent falls there between 20 and 50 millimeters. Again, that's not reciprocated on the forecast until those thunderstorms pipe up on Sunday afternoon, the chance of severe thunderstorms, it does remain low. And if they do pipe up, they will be further inland. But again, I just have this hunch that on Saturday, there could be some decent rainfall along the Gold Coast. And then the rainfall and showers quietening off on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. The chance of a storm on Wednesday, the 4th of December, but it looks like it's going to be pretty remote and much further inland in towards Queensland. We're still going to be on that waiting train for those severe thunderstorms to pipe up again into the southeast of Queensland. We've been waiting long enough for them to pipe up again. It looks like we're going to be waiting another two weeks as well. In terms of Queensland as well, we do actually have some okay rainfall on the forecast, especially for the central coast. I mean, it's nothing flash and nothing to really get your hopes up. But again, rainfall accumulations of 25 to 50 millimetres over a week-long period. If that stuff does keep itself up over the coming couple of weeks and then into the next month, you're still talking about month-long accumulations. I mean, this is a very hopeful number for some of these locations, but up towards 200 millimetres, which is welcome rainfall. Again, over the next 10 days, Bundaberg and Agnes Water could see very little rainfall, but Rockhampton might be 
in the chance of around 10 to 15, uh, not 10 to 15 millimeters, 10 to 15 millimeters on a couple of days rather, but up towards 50 millimeters over the next 10 days. And the majority of that rainfall coming through on Saturday and Sunday, just from those showers that are expected to pipe up here and there. Well, Sunday and Monday, actually, so those showers do get quite consistent. And then further up the coast, up towards Bowen and Mackay as well, a few showers and storms expected here and there on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and even in towards Tuesday morning as well. Nothing crazy, but again, it is some decent rainfall and certainly something that uh, a few people will be very hopeful for. Even in towards the far north of Queensland as well, there have been some good falls over the last week. In fact, there's been some good falls over the past 24 hours. It hasn't been enough to kind of kick off the wet season properly and get those rivers flowing, those dams full. But from showers and thunderstorms that could pipe up over the coming couple of days, hopefully in the Atherton Tablelands, or not so much over the coming couple of days, but towards the end of this week and into this coming weekend on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, a way to send out November and welcome in summer, all the official start of summer. You can see Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the chance of thunderstorms across the Cape York Peninsula and into far northern Queensland, especially across the Atherton Tablelands, the impacting communities such as Chilago, Atherton, and Raven. So much needed rainfall for them. Uh, so again, this is very hopeful indeed. Uh, but again, a lot of people will be very happy to see this on the forecast here. A great way to start off December with a little bit of rainfall. The Atherton Tablelands right now completely parched and desperate for some rainfall, especially some heavy rainfall as well, uh, just to kind of top things up because they are currently in drought conditions, as you can see on the drought monitoring map here, or further inland, they're well and truly in drought conditions. It looks like it's eased off a little bit around the Atherton Tablelands area, but still bone dry up there, and they do desperately need that rainfall to come through. Uh, so again, that's a pretty good forecast here, all things considered. It's also reciprocated between the other forecast models, so that's actually kind of a hopeful thing to see. The GFS always does call for a bit more or, or a bit excessive rainfall in terms of the um, accumulation intensity. I think the fact that we're just going to be seeing some moderate precipitation here and there from thunderstorms on Sunday and Monday is a much more accurate forecast here. But yeah, rainfall accumulation is looking pretty healthy from Friday onwards for a lot of far northern Queensland, which is great to see. And in fact, you can see peak accumulations towards 150 millimetres here from sh just thunderstorms. So there is going to be some heavy falls across the far northern uh, parts of Queensland. Unfortunately, that's just going to be kind of light to moderate across the Atherton Tablelands, but still could see some heavy falls up there, which would be great to see that, again, they do desperately need that rainfall. And just to wrap things up for Australia, before we go and talk about that tropical cyclone threat, we do have a five-day thunderstorm outbreak across interior parts of the Northern Territory, extending in towards Queensland and even pockets of South Australia as well. Very typical weather for this time of the year, and it has already begun this morning with a couple of showers and thunderstorms across Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory, but you can see showers and thunderstorms very widespread tonight across interior parts of the Northern Territory between Alice Springs up to through Tennant Creek and Elliot, and then once again uh, up through uh, Arnhem Land, extending north through Catherine, Jebaru, and Darwin. You can see a lot of thunderstorms expected there this afternoon and evening. The showers and thunderstorms continuing through tonight. They pop up again in dramatic fashion tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon. A lot of showers and thunderstorms expected pretty much everywhere across the Northern Territory. In fact, there doesn't look like a place that's going to kind of miss out on these thunderstorms apart from the extreme southwestern corner. And then showers and thunderstorms as well extending through Queensland and the parts of the Kimberley region of WA. More showers and storms expected Wednesday. In fact, Wednesday is probably going to be the most intense day for areas around Arnhem Land. Could see some very good falls around Darwin and it's some very good falls as well around the Kimberley region of WA. A lot of thunderstorms expected there. So if you are a storm chaser as well, could be a great day to get out for a bit of a chase. Thursday morning as well, showers and thunderstorms everywhere. We could see a line of pretty heavy rainfall, all things considered, across the northwestern corners of uh, the Northern Territory around Wadi and then extending through uh, WA through Kununurra and Wyndham. We could see some heavy falls there. Showers and thunderstorms would be a little bit more isolated on Thursday. Still could see some severe ones here and there, especially around Elliott and Wave Hill. They will be a little bit more isolated, however, into the top end of the Northern Territory. And then on Friday as well, the last day of this kind of thunderstorm outbreak, if you'd like, and more showers and thunderstorms expected here and there before things calm down a little bit on Saturday. Still a lot of showers and thunderstorms expected on Saturday, but it's going to be more typical wet season stuff as opposed to a complete mayhem thunderstorm outbreak across the Northern Territory. Now, there is, of course, a chance of severe thunderstorms bringing heavy rainfall, damaging winds, and also the chance of some medium to large sized hailstones further inland across the Northern Territory. So make sure you are staying safe and preparing livestock and property for the chance of severe thunderstorms if you do go under a warning. These thunderstorms here, stock standard and very typical for this time of the year, we are heading deeper and deeper into the wet season now. So again, these thunderstorms, nothing out of the ordinary at all. But you can see peak rainfall accumulations over the next five days expected to be well in excess of 150 millimetres across this part of the Northern Territory around Elliott and Tennant Creek. The chance of riverine to flash flooding is also expected. And this has been very consistent on the forecast as well. So um, again, it's pretty much a set in stone by the looks of things that we are going to see some flash flooding or riverine flooding in this area because that is a lot of rainfall, 150 millimetres over a couple of days here. It's going to be soaking rainfall for the 
the most part, but a lot of it falling in a short period of time will cause some flooding concerns. And then in this little section here in far remote uh, Northern Territory in Queensland along the border, you can see peak rainfall accumulations once again up towards 150 millimetres. Darwin expecting anywhere between about 100, uh, or no, 80 to 120 millimetres of rainfall, most likely around that 100 millimetre mark with the bulk of it coming through on Wednesday and Thursday. Also the chance of some good falls on Friday as well. They might have a couple of days of tame weather tonight and tomorrow night. Again, it is thunderstorm, so very, very difficult to predict as well and hard to put an accurate number on rainfall and where exactly they are going to occur as well. And you've noticed me panning offshore across towards Western Australia as well. Take a look at this rain swathe here. This is key tropical cyclone stuff that we need to be looking out for for this time of the year. And Invest 96S is continuing to intensify and actually put on a bit of a show as well. It still is very weak and still definitely not even classifiable as a tropical low, but it has got winds of 25 knots at this time and certainly probably feeling like a tropical low is beginning to wrap itself up around West Island on the Cocos Keeling Islands. Once again with winds 29 kilometers an hour out of the southeast, gusting up towards 50 kilometers an hour today. Not gale force at all and not even gale force wind gusts but at this time certainly would feel like something is beginning to pipe up there so quite interesting to see and if we do get a bit of a radar loop that is going to load in here you can see that this system well once this loop does load it is beginning to rotate and beginning to rotate quite nicely the Bureau of Meteorology has tagged this as tropical low 01U as well so it has earned an official classification from the Bureau of Meteorology and unfortunately it doesn't look like the satellite picture here wants to work at all so we will give this a miss for today but you can see in terms of the forecast it does actually have a chance of development. In fact, the Bureau of Radiology being pretty bullish in my opinion, giving it a 40% chance of tropical cyclone genesis sometime on Wednesday and Thursday. And in fact, it does a good job here. You can see on the forecast, looking a lot stronger than what it has been, uh, done for the last couple of days. Still, I wouldn't classify this as a tropical cyclone through Wednesday and Thursday. Won't meet the Bureau of Radiology's uh, gale force wind quadrant rule until at least Friday morning by the looks of things. And it might just be a little bit too far south at this point. So it's still going to be a very interesting question whether this gets tagged as a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone. My uh, gut feeling on this system is that it's not going to. Again, I would like to see tomorrow's forecast. There has actually been a big uptick in the expected intensity of this system here uh, from yesterday's forecast, but I still don't think it's going to get classified as a tropical cyclone. And if it does, it's going to be a very, very brief classification, probably about six to 12 hours. And certainly no threat to WA as well. You can see it moving pretty quickly away from Western Australia come around this weekend. And it still remains very far offshore from Western Australia, but it could impact the climate in the south east uh, southwestern corner of the state brings some much welcome warm temperatures across the southwest again we will just wait and see on what actually happens there but yeah that is all that i have time for today and today's forecast update if you have enjoyed it then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already the support lately has been much appreciated uh and again a special shout out to the channel sponsors i could not run this show without them and again their support is also much appreciated thank you so much for watching the video to this point if you've got any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below and i will catch you all in the next storm goodbye